mad. She had a lot of weapons. <laughs> I remember one time I cut one of her brand new brooms up to make nunchucks like Bruce Lee. I, I didn't know she knew how to use them. <laughs> she grabbed it like, uh-huh. See, I got something for your little ass. You ain't gonna be cutting up my brand new brooms around here, Mr. Grasshopper ass. Let me show you something. She pulled out another pair and was like, look at this, let me show you. <laughs> my mom is serious, man. I do love her. I gave her a hard way to go, and you know, when I think about it, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't call, I wouldn't call it child abuse. <laughs> Because I learned to call it love. She just loved me a lot. Plus, I was a badass little kid. You know how some kids just, they don't get it, man, because I was hyper. You know, I would run around and say, like, one time we got in the car to go to Sunday school. Well, I wouldn't get in the car because I freaked out. She said I was possessed. Boy, get your little ass in this car. I was like, no! <laughs> Sugar, oh, try to make me, try to make me, try to make me. She hit me with the car. <laughs> Y'all laughing at my pain. I'm gonna be all right, you know. I just gotta work on it. <laughs> Woo, I'm about to die telling you all this stuff. I love my mom. She's good people. My, my, my mom is cool. My father, he ain't, he ain't right. And that's what I mean. When I call home, I go, hey, mom, how's dad doing? Oh, you know he ain't right. <laughs> he out there acting like he driving that car. <laughs> ain't no damn engine in that car. <laughs> my pop, man, he, he just trying to get away, that's all. <laughs> He's been married a long time, you know? Cause I caught my father, he was barbecuing in the snow, y'all. He set up a grill outside in the snow. I was like, hey, Pop, what you, what you doing, man? And you, shut up! Just mind your damn business. You don't even live here no more. Who gonna help me now? Who gonna help me now? Your mother told me to come out here and set up this damn grill. I can't believe I'm out here in the snow making two damn hot dogs. All my friends watching the game, charcoal burning my eyebrows off my head. Cause your mother's sick, that's what's wrong with it. You do. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're almost ready, baby. Here, boy, get this note to the outside for me. But I love them. My mom and pop are cool people. Until they invite them, them dysfunctional relatives over the house. Y'all know everybody got them relatives. My aunt came over our house and she had a blonde wig on her head like nobody was gonna say nothing. <laughs> Last year she had black hair, this year she had a blonde wig on, the black hair was sticking out the front. She looked like a ram walking around the house. She got this stuff that be swinging under here. You know that be... When I was a kid she let you swing on the head. Get on boy, go ahead, hurry up. I love her, she always has pocketbook candy. You know what that is? The wrapper comes off, it's in the bottom of the bag. Stuff stick to it like keys and earrings and tissue. They give it to you in church, doctor's office. Somebody wants you to be quiet. Here, put that in your mouth. Shut up. You're like, hey, hey, thank you for the candy. 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 Thank you. Hey, that's a toenail. What you trying to do to me? <laughs> Y'all relating, huh? Yeah. She comes over. She brings my uncle that drinks too much. Everybody got an uncle that drinks too much because there's a quota. If you don't have one, you better get one. They drink too much because they're happy and they start crying. Somewhere in between, they always want to fight. A whole lot to say nobody can understand, but then. Hey, no, 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 no,
love and shit. Ah, uh -uh, don't give my shit. <laughs> Cause I'm a man, baby. Man, M A, man. That's all you got in there. Cause every year, every year y'all invite me over this house to make fun of me. Shit, I know it. Cause I could feel it. I, I got feel. Shit, feeling. <laughs> Not any more than feeling. <laughs> Shit, you, just, you think you better than me. Shit, I know I got a problem. I admit it. I'm gonna admit it. I drink. <laughs> What do you do? What do you do? So what? So what? So what? It's my shit. It's mine. And I could drink as much, as much as I want to because I don't need you simply, 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 sympathetic. Because I'm all of y'all. Let me tell you something. If, Is, it, is this getting too real for you? <laughs> That's right. I was, I watched them all, man. My, my, uh, I was a badass little kid. You know how some kids are so bad when they run around the house, you hope they bump their head just hard enough so they'll fall asleep for about two hours? I was like that. I remember one time my uncle came over our house. He had too much to drink. We had to let him stay overnight. He got up the next morning and let a Jehovah's Witness in our house. I ain't saying that they're bad people, but y'all know that's a long conversation. <laughs> and it's always when you got somewhere to go, right? My father gave me and my sister the rules. He said, if you let the man come in the house, you gotta sit down and talk to him out of respect. Not when the cartoon's on. <laughs> I lost my mind. Oh no! Oh, wait a minute! I'm gonna tell my daddy on you, on girl. Hey, dad, listen. Me and Murray were sitting on the couch watching Scooby Doo. You know the one with Scooby and Shaggy be in the Horny Castle and the ghost taps Scooby on the back and they drop all the Scooby snacks. They don't got no money to get no more. So they kissed him up to God to make the dirt roll off. Anyway, we were sitting there eating tricks up for kids. You know the one with the silly rabbi. I can't eat the green ones. They give me indigestion. Anyway, we didn't even have our feet on the new couch or nothing because I know he didn't finish paying for it yet, right? Anyway, we were sitting there. Uncle Earl was downstairs playing your Al Green records all night. I think he broke one of them, but I ain't sure which one. I think it was Love and Happiness. Anyway, we were sitting there. Uncle Earl came upstairs, he walked in front of the TV. We couldn't see the man said, Conjunction, Junction, what's your function? They came over your house too, didn't they? Anyway, we were sitting there, Uncle Earl went to the door, let Jehovah's Witness man in downstairs right now looking through the refrigerator, but I ain't gonna tell, don't tell, I ain't gonna tell you. My father freaked out. That damn Earl, child, I'll send your mother down there to kick his ass. You tell that Earl I said he come over my house and let a Jehovah's Witness man and he got to sit his ass down and talk to him. You tell him, boy, because I, I, I got to go. Let me tell y'all something. Anytime you give a hyper little kid a message like that to take back to an out-of-control adult with a curse word, give him grenades, too. I was way too happy. Okay, back to me. Uncle Earl, my daddy told me to tell you that if you come over our house and let a Jehovah's Witness man there, it's because you're illiterate because you didn't go past the second grade and you can't read a book by yourself. And you stink because you don't take a bath for two or three days at a time. And your wife kicked you out the house. That's why you're living with us, eating one of your fair share of food, leaving chicken bones in the basement. Now we got roaches. We never had roaches before. And you can't pay for pest control because they don't take s and green stamps. And you need to put some gas in your car to take your lazy ass further than the block to get a job. And stop cutting your toenails in the bathroom, making us cut our feet and we're going in to brush our teeth. And be let a Jehovah's Witness man in. You gotta sit your smelly, stinking, illiterate, no gas in your car, big toe in their ass down and talk to him. Ah! Thank you. Thank you. I was rough, man. I was... San Francisco, yeah, all right. Damn. This is a dream.